Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. It is Thursday. I hope you're doing well. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. I'm in the process of uh, recording and posting the mid-March readings. So you'll see those between now and Monday afternoon. So hopefully everybody is uh, doing great. So let's see what's coming up. We have a new moon in Pisces happening this weekend. That's a big deal. The energy is very spiritual and it's a good time to plant the seeds. <laughs> it's a good time to plant the seeds of your future connections. Do you want to uh, connect more with your guides? Do you want to, you know, what kind of spiritual practice do you want to create? It's a really good time to do that. Also, Pisces is very loving energy. It is, uh, it is kind of like a global um, hug. It's a, um, it's definitely about compassionate empathy. Okay. And so having some compassionate empathy for people and relearning that skill, I feel like we get so hijacked by dopamine and serotonin triggers that speaking of which here's one jealousy, <clears throat> holy moly divinity. That's very interesting, given what I was just saying. Here's Saturn. All right, so um, time. Um, there's something about, okay, time heals all wounds. There's something about that. But I'm really feeling uh, Chiron energy connected to some kind of legacy of jealousy, like not good enough, feeling not enough, feeling not good enough. I feel like this is the time, even though this is a new moon, I feel like this is the time to release that. I don't really think that's the story. And I just had my Pathfinder group and we were talking about intuition and about how our brain hijacks um, experiences that we're having by telling it quickly, like bringing it up into your head and quickly telling a story about it. Someone texting you and automatically you like have this whole scenario already created. You're really cutting off your intuition by doing that. Okay. And, um, you know, for for better or for worse, you could be telling yourself a really positive story about why somebody texted you or a really negative story or a really, you know, convoluted story or just, you know, it could be anything. It's, you know, I'm asking you to just kind of like hold back, <clears throat> stay in your body and um, work on not letting your brain hijack and tell stories about things. Stay curious. Stay curious. All right, let's see what the reading wants to bring through. Because that jealousy card is a trigger for a lot of people. I can totally tell you that. Page of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles, the Strength card, the Four of Pentacles, the Justice card, and the Fool. And I really feel there's Ten of Swords, okay, and then Ace of Pentacles. Wow, all right. So I'm really feeling that there's a, there's a you know, when you have an uncertain narrative about something that's going on in your life. Not sure why someone reached out to you. Not sure why someone's texting you or calling you. Not sure what's going on here. You can want it settled. It's one of those things where people rush to fill in the blanks because they want something settled. I don't want to be, you know, uh, I don't want to be um, caught off guard or blindsided. If I let myself hope about this, what will happen to me? Will I get clobbered by the other person? Now, there's definitely a new path here. And I feel like, um, are you building it on the energy of failure and yucky stuff? Or are you building it on the energy of hope and balance? Okay, with that Libra energy. I definitely feel like that new moon in, um, sorry, the full moon later on, we have the new moon in Pisces this weekend, but the full moon that's coming at the end of this month, March 25th, is in Libra. Ta-da! Is in Libra. And there can be sort of an up in the air feeling about that because it's, it's both a full moon and a new moon at the same time. And what I mean by that is it's an eclipse. And what happens is, the sun is directly opposite the moon. And so the sun is shining right at the moon. That's why it looks full to us, right? The moon, they're looking right at each other in opposition. Libra, Aries, sun and Aries, 
moon in Libra. <clears throat> and it's an eclipse. The sun, the earth is getting in the way. So for a minute there, that moon looks like a new moon, which is nothing, right? Like we don't see it. That moon looks like a new moon. So it can be both a new moon and a full moon at the same time, the energy. And eclipse energy is activation. So activation about what? Activation about the story of an ending, a story of a new beginning, right? We've got new beginnings here and endings at the same time. That's full moon and new moon, right? Endings and new beginnings. The full moon happens, the new moon happens six months ago in Libra time, new moon in Libra. So what's been happening over the last six months, maybe to a relationship, because Libra's relationship, right? Where do you have it in your chart? Where's Libra in your birth chart? That will tell you what part of your life may be impacted by this, especially if you have a planet at five degrees Libra or five degrees Aries, right? Or Libra Aries or five degrees Capricorn, five degrees Cancer. They would be in square to the moon and the, and the sun. So that means we've got oppositions, we've got squares, we've got conjunctions possibly. That's a lot of energy activation, okay? And I can see that. So what's really coming through is there's messages coming through to you. So I feel like some of you are feeling both empowered and disempowered at the same time. Some of you are feeling like this is really good. And what if it's not? What if it's really bad? What if something happens that's the Ten of Swords and not the Ace of Pentacles? I almost feel like this is Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> that famous story, that famous um, experiment. It's not famous because of Big Bang. It was famous because before then it was a big deal that um, Schrodinger hypothesized or talked about you put a cat with a vial of um, anthrax or whatever it was, a poison, definitely, in a box and you seal the box and the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. We don't know. We're not sure. Did the cat step on that glass vial and release the, the poison or didn't he? We don't know unless we open that box. So they talk about that a lot on the Big Bang Theory. They talk about Schrodinger's cat, that there is a... A, an equal, it's both and. It can be both and. It can be, <clears throat> the cat can be both alive and dead at the same time. We cannot hold that in our head at the same time. But I feel like that's what's happening here. I feel like some of you are holding those two possibilities in your head at the same time. That something can be both starting and ending at the same time. Something can be both, um, mature and immature at the same time. Think about opposites, sun, opposite, moon, oppositions. Think about that for a second, okay? So that's one story that's coming through. I still haven't gotten to the jealousy part of this yet. Three of cups, high priestess, seven of swords, oh boy. Seven of pentacles. There's a secret here. There's a secret here. Four of cups right in the middle. That could be April or that can be four months from now. Three of pentacles. Four of wands. Page of pentacles and the two of swords. This is both a, a relationship that is new and old. This is a relationship that is both both alive and dead at the same time. This is something that is both an affair and a and not an affair at the same time. Okay, there's a lot going on here. This is both third party and different kind of third party at the same time. So this can be a you know the traditional third party when you're talking about a triangle of people, but this could be a, a third party as it relates to someone's work, some other addiction is getting that third party designation. Some other thing. Work, alcohol, drugs, gambling, um, exercise. Somebody has a 
I think I'm talking to some of you that have a, um, a secret that you may feel a, a little shame about or something like that. There's something about like not wanting to talk about it. It could be about money. There could be a lot of debt. There could be a lot, whatever it is, I feel like there's something here. There's a secret about it. There's some kind of secret. There's also some kind of secret, but it's between you and another person. Secret relationship, secret connection, secret spiritual activation, maybe twin flame, right? But there's jealousy here, okay? There's jealousy. And with Saturn here, with this time um, card coming up, it's sort of like long, this is long term. This is something that may have started a long time ago, this relationship, a long time ago. Okay, so I'm seeing that for some of you. I'm seeing for others of you. There's a piece of whatever's going on in your life that is inspiring you to feel like you're not the only person in the room. You're not the only one who is seeking this job. You're not the only one who is seeking this promotion or seeking this the attention of this person, seeking this type of um, accolade or something like that. There's another person in the room. Yep. Death. There's Scorpio. Nine of Swords. King of Swords. And the world. Really? Hanged Man. One more, please. And the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Wow. This is pretty big. So <clears throat> some of you are seeking um, the favor of a person, seeking, wanting this person to fall in love with you, want, wanting. I feel like there's something going on with, a, with an, the other person. Okay. They're going through like a death. They're going through the ending of a, um, a destined, faded connection or a destined, faded part of their life. You may just simply think that, okay, um, I'm working on my own stuff and I am now connecting with um, maybe this person from the past or a person who is who is on my life path. This is definitely anchored in your, um, in your spiritual blueprint, this person. So there, there's a little whiff of twin flame here, but I, I don't want to get sidetracked into that too much. I just want you to know that there is a, a meeting or a connection destined and faded for you to be part of, have some connection with over the next four months. All right. It's going to evolve over the next four months. I feel like one of you is resisting this connection. Okay. I feel like one of you is resisting, like there's a change going on in someone's life right now. And I, some, for some of you, I think this person might be jealous of the fact that uh, you might not have these big issues going on. You're focusing on your spiritual growth. You're taking care of your own life, whatever. I feel like this person might be jealous of you that things seem to be lighthearted in your world or something like that, or not. Well, you may not think it's lighthearted, but compared to what this person's going through, you're having a good time. All right. You might be feeling a little bit, um, a little bit off or like there's, there's, um, more going on than, you know, there's definitely more going on than, you know, the world card, the hanged man and the wheel of fortune. So world and wheel of fortune are definitely about portal events moving into the next level. And the hanged man is like, this person kind of has to release themselves into this destined and faded connection. They're resisting it. This person is resisting it. Seven of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups. This person is resisting it. So you might be, I feel like you are the high priestess here. I feel like you're the person who is saying, okay, there's a lot going on around me. There's definitely some conversation, some secrecy happening around me. Like, do you ever walk into a room and you just get the murmur, you get the feeling that there's something going on here that you don't know, like you're not privy to the conversation or something like that? Um, 
What is this Two of Swords about? I don't feel like this person is very forthcoming. The Four of Cups, the Two of Swords, Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands, Six of Pentacles, Three of Swords. Wow. Okay. So there is this, uh, I feel like there is some kind of romantic connection that's happening right now. this person is feeding two people. I, I just feel like you, who is the one, who are you in this picture? Are you the person who is, are you the rich man feeding the two, two beggars or are you one of the beggars? Because I do feel like there is something that's going on that you don't know. And I feel like this is about being curious, being open to things. Why is this person so closed off? Five of Wands, they're struggling, really struggling. Eight of Wands, the Two of Cups, and the Moon. Okay, so we're back to the Moon. This person is going to use this Pisces New Moon or the New Moon, the Full Moon Eclipse, kind of feel like the Eclipse, at the end of the month to share their feelings. This person is resisting like crazy sharing their feelings. This person is going to share their feelings by the end of this month. Okay. And it's like a secret. It's some, for some reason, it's got to be a secret right now. I don't think you know why. I think they're going through a hard time and it's not, you know, they're, yes, I see third party here, but it's not really that they're keeping you a secret because they want that relationship to grow. I feel like that relationship is ending. I also feel like in, just look at it from your own perspective. I think there's things going on in your life that are ending, that are leaving your life. It is destined and fated for some things to be leaving your life. Um, if you're connected to your, high, your intuition, then you know what those things are. This is about spiritual practice. Okay. The, uh, Saturn, Saturn is in Pisces right now, new moon in Pisces. We have uh, Neptune in Pisces. So a lot of illusion here. There's a lot of illusion in this reading. Everybody has their own illusions. Everybody is staking out their own, um, kind of, this is what I think is going on here. Each of you are doing that. And need, none of you have the same idea. None of you have the same idea. I, I just feel like, let's see here. Um, okay. In time for Scorpio season, I saw that death card and I was like, well, okay. So last year in Libra time, the, what happened? What happened last year in Libra time? That was um, September into October, right? September, late September into October is Libra time. <clears throat> and then we have Scorpio time after that. So a couple things. We've got some moons coming up that are Scorpio. We were going to have a Scorpio full moon. All right, I'm going to look at the moon schedule here. Um, March, we have the uh, in the, on the 10th, we have the new moon in Pisces, 20 degrees Pisces. We have the full moon, five degrees Libra on the 25th. Next month, we have the new moon. This is a big one. April 8th, for other reasons, another eclipse. And then the full moon in Scorpio, 23rd of April, right after Uranus is conjuncting or Jupiter is conjuncting Uranus. The end of April is going to be a time when this thing comes together. So right now there's three people here or three parts of your life or something like that, that are kind of all working themselves out. This feels like lots going on under the surface. All right. Lots going on under the surface. So I will continue with this reading. I will pull cards for each of you, each Zodiac sign to give you some guidance. Um, it does feel like that Scorpio full moon um, is going to be some kind of watershed moment. April, you know, April 24th, 
the April 20th, Jupiter conjuncting um, Uranus in Taurus. There's going to be some kind of big, like, clap, like, boom happening at the end of April for you if you're resonating with this and then in time for Scorpio season things it's like it's got to take its time to eat to work its way out all right so let's continue on with this reading there's a link below if you want to continue on pathfinders let's just keep going all right I hope you enjoyed that video if it was helpful to you please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.